Good morning from Huntington Beach, California. My name is John Kyo and I'm down here from Toronto in the California area enjoying a couple of months of sunshine. So I posed a question on LinkedIn and asked folks, what would you like to hear about traceability? And my goal today is to do a five minute only, a five minute overview or a five minute primer, which will be one of several videos that I'll do on traceability. So with that, let me share my screen with you. There we go. And you can see I also have a role as a professor of practice at McGill University Center of, uh, for the Convergence of Health and Economics, where we're looking at large scale interoperable systems in the agri food sector. So thank you to all of these people here who uh, put in requests and questions. I can't go through all of them, but you can see here that uh, supply chain transparency, interoperability are very, very important. And uh, Leandro talks about connecting cargo batches and item level traceability. So thank you to everyone for the, uh, the questions. And there were several more questions on Twitter as well. So I want to inform you that the following materials are all from GS1 sources and freely available to download. And as a disclaimer, although I am a former executive at GS1 Canada and GS1 Global Office, I am not authorized to speak on behalf of GS1 and my comments and inputs here are my own views. So individuals and organizations who want to learn more should contact their local GS1 organization and discuss their needs. So with that, here are three key resources for you. On the left-hand side, the GS1 Global Traceability Standard, an absolutely fantastic document. Then there's other more specific uh, documents for by sector, like this one here for fresh fruit and vegetable traceability. And in Australia, uh, our good friends down there have an Australian dairy traceability guideline as well. So with that, what is traceability? So traceability in this definition within the GS1 standard, it adapts uh, the ISO 9001 2015 and says traceability is the ability to trace the history, application and location of an object. And when considering a product or a service, traceability can relate to the origin of materials and parts, its processing history, and the distribution and location of the product or service after delivery. Very important. So the traceability general principles and aims, you have upstream traceability, you have internal traceability, and then you have downstream clients and what we call downstream traceability. So what does that mean? It means that if you ship products out through your distribution, uh, out to point of sale, you can see that if there is an issue, a product safety recall, you have to have the ability to trace backwards. So we don't trace forward, we trace backwards in our supply chain to try to figure out where the products came from. And you see it's up to point of sale here, not to the consumer. Traceability systems and principles were never intended to do traceability to food consumers. That's never the intention. And also to track forward. So if you're a supplier, a processor, you want to know where you shipped the products to, then we have to do a, a track forward to figure out who actually got those products. Again, it's up to point of sale, not to the consumer. There is a nuance here. If you're a member of loyalty program or you bought online, your personally identifiable information will be legally captured by your trading partners and they will be able to trace it to the consumer, but that's an exception. So traceability data, very important. Two things here that are critical. CTEs are critical tracking events, like something that's leaving your operation, less a physical shipment. And then there's KDEs or key data elements. So that's the who, what, where, when, and why. The who is the GLN or global location number. The what is the GTIN or the product or lot number. The where is it going to is the global location number of the party. When did that happen and why did it happen? So which business process? GS1 also in the traceability standard, it breaks it down into the physical flow and the information that flows alongside a product. Very, very important here to go through this at the level of detail so that you have a common understanding within your organization. GS1 also breaks it down into the traceability data collection in business process steps here on the left hand side. It tells you at harvesting what needs to be captured, the who, what, when, where, why, manufacturing and shipping and then in the transportation, receiving and selling. So this is really a dummy's guide to understanding how traceability works and what are all the key elements along the supply chain. 
when you get up to interoperability at global level, you just take everything I just talked about and you manage that at the global level between the different trading partners where the CTEs, the critical goal tracking events, and also the KDEs become very, very important. You could also consider traceability as a process. Now, this is a 15 plus year old slide, but I thought I would throw it in just to give you an idea. If all of these boxes down on, on the bottom here all represent different companies, then think of, uh, of traceability and transparency as a, as a business process. There are different types of traceability networks, decentralized, decentralized, cumulative, and networked. Think of the decentralized as in blockchain, centralized as what we've had for many, many years. Networked is a hybrid of those. And then the cumulative is more like the Russian doll where you're passing information along to the next party in the supply chain and it's, cum uh, it's cumulative. Uh, like you, what you do in pharmaceuticals or highly regulated sectors, like if you're removing uh, explosives or uh, very valuable equipment along a supply chain. This is the major slide. I'm, I'm not going to go through this in much detail, except to say that all of these things at the top, these abbreviations, these are all GS1 keys that enable the identification of objects and also their traceability within a system. So GLN, global location number, GTIN, and GS1 actually tells you with this slide which identifier to use. So the SSCC is a serialized shipping container code that would be used on a, a carton, but it could also be used on a pallet. And then you have the global uh, uh, individual asset identifier, like a transport truck or a container. And as you move along the supply chain, you see the different identifiers that can be used. In this context, the GS1 system is all often uh, called the identify, capture, and share. The identify is on the top. The capture is in the middle with all of these different systems there. They're called the barcodes and RFID tags. They are called uh, data carriers. And regulation normally defines which data needs to be carried, and then industry will decide which data carrier to use and, and which data carrier can actually fit that information. Down at the bottom, of course, master data, transaction data, and event data, very important to understand all three of those and how they work. And to know that master data and transaction data have both a public and a private aspect as well, as you can imagine. And when all of these systems are in place with all of the trading partners, you can enable interoperability in supply chains. Have a look at all of this in your GS1 traceability standards and enjoy the journey. Feedback always very, very welcome and thank you very much.